You can leave this and this on auto if you want to. Encore. I do 1.8 of whatever the memory is at. Double the memory. So. 1.8 or whatever is closer to that. Slightly above. 1568. Oh, trying to hope this and do a calculator. Times 1.8 is 2822. You see 2940. I'm guessing that times 14 would be slightly under 2822. So in this case, I do that. Uh, this one here, really, 36 is like your only option. You got 48, which is a lot higher, I think, is your other option. Let's see. Like I said, you can leave these on autos if you want to get 44. 44, 48. I'm doing 196 times 22. Here's your advanced features. I've got it. I've got turbo off. You can turn your C states on if you want. I've got them off. Uh, memory, that's going to be depending on yours. I've got mine extreme. And then here I've got 98927. Extreme on a gigabyte board kind of does this auto uh, timing tightening thing. How it exactly works, I don't really know. If I was going to do, when I, anytime I overclock my RAM where I've got real tight timings like in the 7s or something like that, 7 cast, then I've got, uh, now I've got the, uh, you know, that instead of extreme, I've got it on normal. But when I'm just running whatever the stock fits for the RAM, then I've got it on extreme, so it kind of does that auto tightening thing. Here's this. No. I keep my DRAM on 1.5, which is stock for my RAM. Uh, I don't like overclocking it. Uh, recommended, I'd say try to get whatever you can. Load line calibration, that's uh, how much it's going to take for V droop. And level 2 is going to be more aggressive. It's pretty much going to eliminate all V droop, but it can spike a little higher than what you got set. So if I do 1 through 6, 5, 2, and it starts to have V droop, when, instead of V droop happening, it might spike higher, it might go to 1.375 for a second or something. I would recommend my chips degraded a little bit because I've overclocked it so much. I'd recommend seeing what you get can get for uh, 1.35. I'd say you can go up to 1.375 and not worry too much about uh, degradation. But uh, I'd try to see what you can get for 1.35 on here. Uh, 1.33... It's a lot higher than a lot of people. Uh, anywhere, I would probably tr try in this range, 1.25 to 1.35. Like I said, this chip is old and stuff. I could probably go lower, but when I get in those, you know, four or five hour gaming sprees and Metal Gear Solid or something, the last thing I want to do is my computer to crash. And like I said, I could fiddle with it and try to tighten it up, but, uh, I could probably go lower than this, but I've got it where it's at. Things are, I'm happy where things are at, so. And last one is here. And I've got those enabled. So, I hope that helped you out, man. Um, I'll probably post this on YouTube for everybody, but somebody was asking me about the current overclock I'm doing. And in case anybody's curious, uh, Basically, when I do 4.5, I just increase the multiplier, I keep 196, and on my voltages, I think I leave 1.33 the, uh, the same, and I think I take this to about 1.400, so I think I go to, yeah, I think I go to that. I can get it here, somewhat stable here, somewhat here, but it really sucks when you get a crash when you're in the middle of doing a fire strike or something. And the only time I run 4.5 voltage, you know, 
they run a 4.5 gigahertz overclock, which is like 50 percent overclock on this chip. The only time I, I do something like that is when I'm wanting to do like fire strikes because I'm trying to do graphics card benchmarks and stuff like that. So uh, there you go. I hope it helped you.